Pleural Effusion versus Thoracentesis. Starting with Pleural Effusion, think plenty of fluid in the lung space. More specifically, fluid collection in the pleural space, greater than 15 ml of fluid. This fluid prevents full expansion of the lungs and results in decreased gas exchange and atelectasis, basically the collapse of the alveoli. So less oxygen in and less CO2 out. So naturally, we see a buildup of CO2, that carbon dioxide, in the body, resulting in more acid, pushing the body into acidosis, as well as fluid-filled alveoli, leading to that atelectasis. Again, remember, that's the collapse of the tiny little air sacs. Now for the causes of pleural effusion, typically caused by pneumonia, that lung infection that fills up the lungs with fluid, and even heart failure, where we see heavy fluid buildup in the body and the lungs. So just think HF for heart failure, HF for heavy fluid inside the body. Now for signs and symptoms, the key sign to write down is number one, chest pain during inhalation, taking a deep breath. Number two is dyspnea, that shortness of breath, obviously since the lungs are filled with fluid. Number three is diminished breath sounds on the bottom or lower lobes, aka the lung bases. And number four, a big one here, is dull resonance on percussion. Kind of like slapping a paint can or a jug of water. So just think of the double L's here. L for dull resonance, L for fluid filled lungs. Now don't let the anklex trick you here. It's not hyper resonance. That's high air trapping inside the lungs. So write down these four because these are the key signs that came up multiple times on a few select all that apply questions. Now Kaplan states, suspected pleural effusion findings, decreased breath sounds noted in the lower lobe. So for interventions, the number one priority is to drain that fluid. So the key term here is thoracentesis. We literally stab the patient in the back with a big old large board needle. Okay, it's not really that violent here. We gently place the needle through the intercostal space, or basically that space between the ribs, and we gently puncture the lung in order to drain the fluid. Now, before we start the procedure, number one, we must prevent the patient from bleeding out. So always highly tested, so write this down. We must stop all blood thinners. So antiplatelets like aspirin and clopidogrel, brand name Plavix, and anticoagulants like warfarin and heparin, and even enoxaparin, our lower molecular weight heparin. The second thing we do is have the patient sign a consent form, typically done with all surgery or invasive procedures where the HCP will be stabbing the patient with a sharp object. Lastly, we get a chest x-ray before and after the procedure to compare fluid and lung expansion. Now, after the thoracentesis, Here's the key concept. ATI mentions correct instructions after the thoracentesis. Have the client take deep breaths after the procedure. Now, this helps re-expand the lungs and promotes adequate oxygen exchange. And we also keep the head of the bed up in semi fowler's position and have the client lie on the unaffected lung to keep the bad lung up. This promotes lung expansion as well. Now, thoracentesis has good news and bad news here. The good news is we remove the fluid from the pleural space and improve lung expansion. And we can send the fluid to the lab to help diagnose the root cause of the pleural effusion. So whether it's from an infection or even checking cancer markers. Now, the bad news here is the big complications. So just think about it here. We're sticking the patient with a large bore needle directly into the lung space. This can cause a deadly pneumothorax, basically a popped lung, or even a hemothorax, that blood in the lung, and even introduce infection. So post-procedure, the key assessment findings that require immediate intervention, and we must report these to the HCP immediately. Key term again is pneumothorax, that air inside the lung space. So we see asymmetrical chest expansion, or basically unequal movement of the chest, and key term here, decrease.
decreased breath sounds on the affected side. We also see hyperresonance indicating high air inside the lungs. So just remember H for hyperresonance, H for high air in the lung space. And lastly, deviated trachea from a tension pneumothorax. All that air pressure inside the lung space builds up and pushes the trachea to the opposite side. That's why we always take a chest x-ray before and after the procedure to document any abnormalities. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides.